Happy Easter to you all. What a beautiful Easter morning it is, isn't it? To be here, we said we don't really even need a coat on this morning. Well, that makes a change, doesn't it? So isn't that lovely? And we wish you all a happy Easter on Zoom as well. And it's a very special Easter Sunday as Roger and Dean are being baptised. So Roger and Dean and Peter are waiting in the wings. So we're going to say hi to Peter and Roger and Dean this morning. And uh, we pray God's blessing upon them and upon us as we meet in his presence today. So as we come to worship, we're going to stand and read a call to worship together and then sing a lovely East hymn. So let's stand together. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen Darkness has been vanquished. Come, let us worship and celebrate the good news. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Amen. sure of it today. And a little water to boot. <laughs> welcome, welcome all of you. So great to see you and what an exciting day. Not only is it Easter Sunday, uh, it is a baptismal day, a day when we recognize uh, the death, birth, the birth, death and resurrection of our Lord. And uh, no better way than in our baptismal tank. Wow. So we are very pleased. Some scripture readings for us this morning. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done, for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. 
after his baptism, as Jesus came out of the water, the heavens were opened and saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and settling on him. And a voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. Our next passage, Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it is going. So you can't explain how people are born of the Spirit. Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Or have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ Jesus in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead, by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. What an incredible day of testimony at Lakefield Baptist Church this morning. Very, very exciting. Roger, Bell, and Dean Stanich. That's right. Roger's waiting to come in here. Baptist, baptism in, imitates the finished work of Jesus dying for my sin so that I could have life. It's an act of obedience that symbolizes what God has already done in our heart. A public profession that I am a follower of Jesus. Baptism is an emblem of cleansing, signifying that the old has gone and the new has come. It's an act of obedience. It's an outward and visible sign of an inward spiritual experience. It's a symbol of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. The death to sin and the resurrection to new life of the believer. It's also a symbol of the gospel that saves. The changes that already have been accomplished in this life. Baptism is a symbol of the resurrection of the dead of all believers. Let's pray together. God of grace and mercy, we give you our humble and heartfelt thanks for our Savior, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins, was buried, and was raised on the third day. We ask you to accept Roger Bell and Dean Stanich, your children, as they come to you in baptism. We pray that they may be united by faith with Christ in his church and receive forgiveness of sins and the gift of the Holy Spirit, as you have promised. May Roger and Dean walk with Christ throughout life. Keep them strong in faith, in hope, and in love. Pour out on them the rich gifts of your grace, that they may serve you in the building up of your kingdom. Protect Roger Bell and Dean Stanich in all the trials and temptations of this life. At the end, Extend your precious gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I am without one plea that that thy blood was shed for me and that thou bidst me come to
my friend Dean Stanich, and Brett Williams, come on through here. You know, so often as a church family, we don't know all of the things that are going on within our congregation. Uh, some of the things, some of the, un, the unsung stories where, where our uh, disciples of the church go about and make sure that there's proper instruction, that there's healing, and we take the time to do pastoral care. And I think this church does a pretty good job at that. And um, because of, of me meeting uh, Dean about a year ago as well, we've had a journey together, haven't we, brother? Mm -hmm. We've had a journey. We sure, we sure have, yes. And today, you are the healthiest guy I know from about a year ago. He is just a changed man. It's amazing what God can do. And I want you to clap for that because I can tell you he has gone a long way. He, he is my walking miracle. And I just praise God for that. And Brent, you have journeyed with him when I have not been able to do it. Because of timing, you took the time to help a brother and to lead him down this road. And you really, by God's Holy Spirit and his power, you got him here today. And we're just so thankful for that. So bless you, Brent, for being a disciple. You always thought music would be your ministry through the winter. No, this was the ministry uh, helping us all along and giving us a hand. So yes, absolutely. So as we baptize Dean today, I'd just like you to lay a hand on him as well as you've been part of this journey. So Dean Stanich, if you just want to just turn this way, just lay a hand. Dean Stanich, do you profess Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Have you accepted him into your life as Lord? Yes. Do you profess him publicly in front of this congregation? Yes. Will you serve him all the days of your life? Yes. Dean Stanich, with your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark blot to Thee, whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God. wanted to close off before I interrupt any more of the hymn and I wanted to say the baptismal take is here what's stopping you from getting into the water come to me anytime bless you church I come broken to be mended I come wounded to be healed I come desperate to be rescued I come empty to be filled, I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb, and I'm welcome with open arms, praise God, just as I am. Let's stand together.
I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms, praise God, just as I am. I come broken to be mended, I come wounded to be healed, I come desperate to be rescued, I come empty to be I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb, and I'm welcome with open arms, praise God, just as I am, praise God, just as I am. Let's pray, shall we? I come broken to be mended. I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms. Praise God just as I am. Lord Jesus, we are here just as we are, and you know us, and you love us, and we thank you for that. Lord, what a beautiful name. What a wonderful name. What a powerful name you have, and that is the name in which we stand this morning. Lord, you were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High, your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful name it is. Let's sing this lovely song together. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most. Hidden in glory in creation, now revealed in you are Christ. What a beautiful name it is! What a beautiful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is! Nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven. Sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate me now? What a wonderful name it is! What a wonderful name it is! The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is! Nothing compares to this, what a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the veil tore before you, you silence the cross. glory for you are raised to life 
a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a powerful name it is, the name of Jesus. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He is the mighty King, Master of everything. His name is wonderful, Jesus my Lord. He's the great shepherd. Please be seated. As we wait for Peter and Dean and Roger to come and join us again in the sanctuary, we're going to bow our heads for a time of prayer. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He is the mighty King, master of everything. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. He's the great shepherd, the rock of all ages. Almighty God is he. Bow down before him. Love and adore him. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my Lord. Our loving Lord Jesus, on this special Easter day, when we remember that death could not hold you, but you triumphed over it to bring us life and hope. We marvel at your love for us and we bow down before you and we love and adore you. Lord, your name is wonderful, beautiful, powerful, and we thank you for being our saviour, our redeemer, and our great shepherd. Thank you that in you we can know forgiveness. We can know our burdens shared and lifted, and our hearts healed and filled with peace. Thank you that you are gentle with us and kind to us. Thank you that you welcome us with open arms and love and accept us just as we are. 
And so we say with Thomas, when he saw you, my Lord and my God. Lord, our world is full of dark places, yet your resurrection shines a powerful light. People are often hopeless, but your resurrection brings mankind a sure and certain hope of life in your presence from now and into eternity. We often feel frail and anxious, but your resurrection brings strength and courage, peace and purpose. And so in the quiet of these moments, we bring before you our world and its people. We bring before you those known to us who need a special touch of your hand of blessing and healing. And we bring before you ourselves. And as we do, we remember the words of that lovely old hymn, Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Jesus is very near. Lord, we lift up before you today Dorothy and Charles Jackson, Marcy and Bob Sullivan, Doug and Sandra McKenzie. And we remember Cheryl's grandnephew Duncan, seven months old, who was rushed to sick kids yesterday. Lord, we pray that each family would know the eternal God as their refuge, and underneath them, Loving, supporting, and giving them courage are your everlasting arms. Lord, we thank you this morning for the wonderful witness of Roger and Dean as they followed your example through the waters of baptism, and we rejoice with them. We ask that you would hold them fast to you, assure them of your presence, Fill their hearts with light and hope and joy. Be their companion through each step of life's journey and bless them and their families richly, we pray. And as a congregation, we have had the joy of sharing with our pastor Peter his first baptisms here as our pastor at LBC. And we thank you for him and ask that you would richly bless him and uphold him and Shauna as they serve our community here. And our loving, almighty and gracious God, as part of our worship, we now offer you our financial gifts. We ask that you would use them to spread the message of resurrection, love and hope that we celebrate today. And we commit ourselves to being your hands and feet right where you have placed us. Fill us with yourself, Lord, that we would shine for you. We pray these things in the powerful, saving name of Jesus. Amen. And we ask our ushers to come forward as we take up our offerings this morning. my 
soul rejoice. Take joy, my King, in what you hear. May it be a sweet, sweet sound in your ear. reading today is taken from Matthew 28, 1 to 10, and 16 to 20. After the Sabbath, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven And going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and the clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, the place where he lay. Sorry, he is not here, he has risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb after yet filling with joy and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met with them. Greetings, he said. They came to him, clasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Then the eleven disciples were in Galilee to the mount where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him. But some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of age. going to stand and sing together there is love that came for us Jesus 
Thank you, John. Yeah, good. Good morning, church. What a beautiful Sunday. I love Easter Sunday. You go through that week where it's, it's Passion Week and you're just stressing on our Lord and what he's going through. And then Easter Sunday arrives. What a day it is. And so good to see all of you this morning. And of course, the baptisms just put me right out there. Guys, bless you. What a super day for you. Thank you. By the way, I just thought I'd mention from those who were here last week, um, my iPad is back. So, it re yeah, I'm very excited, but thank you. you know, I didn't have to build the church, not that I think they'd pay for that one if I put it on. But um, anyways, lo and behold, it's on the dash of my car after all of that. So I thought I'd share that. Yeah, don't, uh, yeah, I, believe me, I paid the price for that one. So, but anyways, live and learn. <laughs> Anyways, it's home. Thank you. Uh, he is risen. What do you say, church? Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Anything you want. We have talked about real estate before. Location, location, location. A big part of buying and selling, of course. In Matthew's account of the resurrection, he does linger on the significance of location as it relates to Jesus. But how about the day of the week? The day of the week. 
Is it an accident that our Lord Jesus was resurrected on the Sabbath day, that we're here on a Sunday? It's so appropriate in every way. Verse 1 from Matthew that was read is from the biblical illustrator, a really nice description or an analogy of the Sabbath. The first day of the week is a day of mighty memories, memories that we cannot, can, cannot let die. The celebration of the Lord's day has never lost sight of that precious fact in all revelation and religion. The main idea of the Sabbath is that man should occasionally, or more often, lift his eyes from the clouds of earth and gaze into the face of his creator. The first day of the week is a day of happy and noble associations. It is rich in memories of the past great acts of God, but it comes down burdened with all the brightest and most beautiful thoughts of earth. Great revivals of human friendships, great stirring conflicts with evil, the great prosperous changes and revolutions of nations, the deliverance of untold millions from the slavery of sin and the power of death. It's a day of holy anticipations. The first day of the week predicts the endless Sabbath of God's love, the end of conflict, the light of heaven. It is the day of holy duties. It's the first day of the week, not the last. This day will give meaning to your other days. That's from Mr. Reynolds. So the day of resurrection, yes. And Philip Henry used to call the Lord's day, he called it the queen of days, the pearl of the week, and observed it. His common greeting to his family and friends on the Lord's day in the morning was that of the early day Christians. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Absolutely. Making it the first business on the day to celebrate the memory of Christ's resurrection. And he would sometimes say, every day is a true Christian's Easter day. I like that. In Matthew's account of this glorious Easter day, he seems to ask, where is Christ located? Is he in the tomb? If so, the crucified Savior is lying in his grave. Is he in the heavens? If so, we do not have a resurrected Lord, but only a transcendent one. No, Matthew answers. Christ is not here in reference to the tomb. And he hasn't ascended to the heavens yet, Rather, he has risen and is present among the disciples and with us always. In other words, the resurrection and the following commandments of Christ in Matthew's narrative demonstrate something startling. Christ is and always will be Emmanuel, God with us. The setting of the resurrection is such a standout moment, the most important event of our Christian faith. Picture this, Jesus arose in the still of the early morning before the world awakes. Jesus nor the angel appear in front of a large public audience. Rather, they appear first to the women, who in the historical context in this time period, sadly, women were not given a great deal of the credibility they deserved. Yet, Jesus appeared to the ladies first. There is something to that, isn't there? For those in society who would be pushed to the side, Jesus is so quickly their first advocate. The first day of the week began. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear and became like dead men. Early on that morning, following the Sabbath, the most stupendous news began to filter throughout the first century world. Jesus is risen. All of the gospel writers agree on the time and on the amazement with which the followers of Jesus are confronted with the evidence of the resurrection. After the Sabbath, when it was permissible to be involved in work, very early in the morning, as dawn was breaking, the women came to the tomb. 
And this is such an amazing passage on Easter Sunday. When you look for the possibilities, think of this. First, do we think, this is me. First, do we think that the earthquake was needed to bring attention to Jesus' resurrection? Well, maybe, but more likely it was to scare the guards to the point of their own near-death experience so the ladies could address the angel and the see that the tomb was empty. The other aspect we may not think of when we consider this historical event written by gospel writers, do you think that Jesus needed the stone moved to get out of the tomb? I don't think so. And my own silly sense of humor I was thinking this week is say, Jesus didn't need to be in the tomb and say, Abba, send down Michael so he can move the stone so I can get out. It doesn't work that way. This is a God event. We call it a theophany. The appearance corresponded to Old Testament descriptions of heavenly visitors. It has been said that the stone was not removed to let Jesus out, but to let the women in. This theophany, the divine activity leading to the appearance of their Lord, was unexpected by the women and was so bewildering, bewildering that they were actually confused. They ran to tell the disciples that the tomb was empty prompting Peter and John to run immediately to the tomb. The angel told the women not to be afraid, then sharing the exciting news, he is not here, for he is risen, as he said. He commissioned them to go and tell the other disciples that Jesus was going before them to Galilee. This was a note to help us with historical authenticity, identifying the risen Lord as the true Jesus the real deal. The angel had fulfilled his mission, signified by the finality of his words. Behold, I have told you, which actually means literally, this is what I had to tell you. This is what I had to tell you. With both fear and great joy, the women ran to tell the disciples. Matthew's account tells of Jesus confronting the women as a group as they hurried from the garden. And we've mentioned in these other messages, but the word greeting in, in the NIV is translated to rejoice, rejoice. Jesus' greeting was rejoice or simply hail, a greeting to which they all knew very well. And what did the women do? It's further confirmation of who Jesus is. Many like to say, yes, maybe Jesus was a good man who lived but was killed. Resurrection is not part of their version, but the resurrection is everything. He was the real deal, is the real deal, not a ghost and not an imposter. The women were at the feet of Jesus. The act of the women in holding him by the feet was an expression of respect and sovereignty. It was their expression of submission to the risen Lord. Jesus' words were so similar to the message from the angel, do not be afraid and go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee and there they will see me. It's important to note that Jesus used the expression, my brothers, identifying a relationship with them similar to what he had expressed in washing their feet and possibly identifying a larger circle of believers. The expression, the expression could have included all persons attached to him who were in the area of Jerusalem. So just before we move into the exciting post-resurrection, the Great Commission, we can't skip over the continued corruption in the attempted cover-up by the Sanhedrin and all the rest. Those who even today try to push the great lie that Jesus never rose again. The guards were bribed to lie. And this was a tough lie, as falling asleep on the job is a death sentence for a soldier back then. The guards had to tell the chief priests what had happened. Scripture says when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers saying, tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we, while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day in Scripture. Matthew 28 says, Matthew's account of the report of the guards to the Sanhedrin and the bribery is his answer to the report that the disciples had stolen the body. This report was still circulated among the Jewish community, 
at the time Matthew was writing this, this gospel. All the attempted cover-ups helps us to continually authenticate scripture. Matthew's gospel serves several other purposes. Further evidence for belief in the resurrection and evidence of the unbelief and rejection of the Messiah on the part of the leaders of Israel. The Sanhedrin had ensured the crucifixion of our Lord, and now they were confronted with the awesome evidence of his resurrection. They dealt with the report in the one matter which they understood through the use of money. Think of Judas, now the soldiers, payoff. The account says that the Sanhedrin assembled, deliberated, and gave a large sum of money to the soldiers to buy their services to keep their false narrative moving forward. They were petrified, thinking of future ramifications, and maybe a little nervous over eternal destiny. The arrest, trial, sentencing of Jesus was filled with corruption. The authorities really pushed aside the resurrection as this would be their biggest nightmare. Could it be that he really did rise from the dead? They have a problem. But that problem is our glorious future called the way. The church was now well underway. Without the resurrection, what would be the point? But we know the resurrection to be true, and he is with us, as we know. And our belief in his resurrection is based on the evidence that the first disciples had. Some of the proof lies in just a few simple observations. The words of Jesus that he would rise, the witness of angels at the tomb, the empty tomb itself, the appearances of Jesus to believers, the transformation of the disciples, the reaction of opposition, the commission to mission, the existence of the gospel itself, the fact that it was unexpected by the disciples that they were later convinced, and the existence of the church in spite of Jesus' death on Good Friday. It's only fitting on this incredible day in the life of the church that we had two men from our congregation profess their faith in Jesus Christ in the waters of baptism. It so nicely opens the door to the Great Commission and the ascension of Jesus. Calvin gave us an awesome reminder, a reminder in emphasizing the ascension. Jesus Christ took humanity to heaven as the guarantee that you and I can be there someday. Then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. In church, we say this a great deal. Some of us know it very well. But the final words of Jesus we must take very seriously. The disciples journeyed to Galilee. They went to the mountain where Jesus had directed them to go. A key point in the disciples' last mountaintop moment with Jesus on earth was this. What did the disciples do when they saw him? Matthew says, when they saw him, they worshipped. A statement that should stand out for our own worship. This is a pivotal moment. And Charles Stanley, his usual phrase is, now listen, listen now. This is a transition from the preaching of Jesus to their new message of preaching Jesus. So this should resonate in all of us. Now I can say it again. The transition from the preaching of Jesus to their new message of preaching Jesus. And I didn't think I'd be able to push towards a Trinity moment today with all going on, but we can, just for a moment. Upon the appearance of Christ to Thomas, his response to the evidence was the cry of faith, my Lord and my God, he says. At this meeting with the disciples, we have confrontation, we have worship, we have questions, and we have commission. Jesus' statement, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, is a declaration of the ultimate victory of Christ. 
The Greek word for authority means divine authorization. Go, therefore, under this authority is the better translation. Therefore, therefore, while going in the world, make disciples. The emphasis is on make disciples. The others going, baptizing, and teaching. This is the beginning of Jesus' reign, that the sign that the Son of Man is in heaven, in the commission to baptize those who become disciples, Jesus institutes the threefold formula. Another reminder that Jesus is fully alive and with us. Jesus' words of commission, it holds Father, Son, and Holy Spirit together as three by whom God encounters us to encounters us in his own love from all eternity. Matthew says we are to baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes, thank you. Bringing persons into the direct relationship with God as we know him, creator, redeemer, and sanctifier. So that's enough Trinity theology for today. Let's, let's move on. Matthew concludes the book with the most remarkable promise that Jesus would be with the disciples in the spirit whom he could send from the Father until the end of the present age. What a promise. What a gift. All of us, we must affirm that Christ is not in the tomb, as the angel affirms, but he is here in the midst of the church and our world as our very present Savior. Christ is working in us through the power of the Holy Spirit as we continue the mission that he sets before the disciples to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. The resurrection means that God is with us to the end of the age. Church, because of the resurrection, death has lost its sting. Life has meaning beyond anything else. And I can't imagine a life without our Jesus. And the resurrected Jesus, who empowers us to do life with all of its amazement, its beauty, and yes, its hardships, through the gift he sent to us, the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit power. We can live with incredible hope, joy, peace, love, and live with the pains of life because of the resurrection. This long-awaited day, Easter Sunday, finally arrived. Make every day your Easter Sunday. What a beautiful day as a global church, but also a beautiful day for Lakeville Baptist Church. God bless you. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen. How about a hallelujah? Just... Yes, and he has indeed. <laughs> Thank you. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, when we preach the resurrection to a people suffering in a broken world, help us to remember the words of Psalm 30 because of the victorious work of the Son of Man. Weeping may linger for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Because of the empty tomb, God will turn our mourning into dancing and clothe us with joy. Because of the empty tomb, we have peace. Continue to remind us, Father, that because of the resurrection, we can have peace even during the most troubling times because we know you are in control of all that happens in the world. Father, may we never lose sight of this fact. That not only does Jesus' kingdom take away the sting of death, but will right the wrongs of history and in time take away that which separates Jew from Greek and male from female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. And in his name we pray. Amen. God bless you, church. <clears throat> well, let's stand our final hymn of resurrection this morning. Look ye saints, the sight is glorious. See the man of sorrows now. Look ye saints, the sight is glorious. See the man of sorrows now. From the fight return victorious, every knee to him shall bow. Crown him, crown him, crown him, crown him, crowns become the victor's crown. Crown the Savior, angels crown him, rich the 
be seated. If we can get uh, Dean, Roger to come up just for a second, and two of our deacons, Phil and uh, Bob, if you could come up, that would be great. More surprises, Dean, for you. <laughs> you stand over here in front of the church. There you go. Just go ahead, Bob. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> of deacons and the <laughs> and the leadership team it's my pleasure to present you with your certificate of baptism dean roger bless you brother you got to pick the one with the right name on it, though. No, that one, <laughs> you wanted to take both. <laughs> Bless you, brother. Yeah. Wonderful. Thank you, gang. You may be seated. Isn't that exciting? Yes, it is. Thank you. Yes, it is exciting. So church, we're just, we'll wind back and we'll do our benediction at the very end. If you just stand. From Isaiah 60. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Go in peace. Jesus lives and is among us. God bless you, church. You may be seated. A wonderful time.